Oh dear. Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. Um, and it's another unscripted video, or again I say unscripted, but I yet again do have my handy notes with me. So I've I've been wanting to talk about this article for a few weeks now. Unfortunately, I've been ill for about a week, week and a half. Um, ended up sounding like Palpatine from Star Wars. Uh, but I've more or less recovered now, so I can finally record this one. Um, before I begin, though, I, I have some bad news, I'm afraid. Uh, a commenter on one of my videos has told me uh, to stop putting this stupid man with a dog in your video and stop showing that girly hair with moustache and the dog while talking. It is weird. Okay, you know, fair enough. It's not for everyone. So for, for this video only, I'll, I'll change the uh, picture I use and through the power editing it will appear on screen in 3, 2, 1. There you go. I think, I think that's less girly. It's got a, <laughs> it's got a tank in the background. So I was going to start off with this, but I think since I've been ill, I've got a bit behind some of my videos. So we're actually going to detour for a little while. Before we, we'll, we'll come back to you, Philip. Don't worry. And we'll talk about the king. Because <laughs> I noticed my video on that is doing quite popular, actually. Uh, and there was another trailer, which I wanted to do a video on. Um, but unfortunately, as I said, I was ill. So And apparently the film was already out. And the reviews are... Well... <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit sad really. It looks like it could still be good, but from what I'm hearing and from what a lot of the commenters are saying, it doesn't look as good as I was hoping. <laughs> I was really hoping it was going to be good, but alas. Uh, I mean, with the trailer, the second trailer I saw, some of it didn't look too bad. Like, I like the look of uh, the Palace of Westminster. That looked pretty much how it did back in the day. They based off that quite well. Uh, one thing that did worry me was Henry V's sister. The actress is about 18 or 19, whereas historically she's about 12, I think, when she lost for her brother. So I was like, oh dear, that that don't sound good. And then, uh, <laughs> oh god, I'll, I'll just play the clip. You, you gotta hear it. It's it's amazing. Screams of your men. So lull me to sleep at night. I'm French. Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? Seriously, it's 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 beautiful. It's uh, you know, the screams of your men allow me to sleep at night. May his blade die. <laughs> you might as well just have like sort of the dolphin might have just, like a top hat, a mustache, and a cape at this point to be fine. I just like this one. You know, it's a shame, really. Such a missed opportunity. You think you could have a film? Yeah, about... Henry V. Like obviously, he's quite idealised in Shakespeare's version. How about we have a film where it looks kind of like both sides a bit? You know. Think like, hey, how about, you know, maybe we do a bit of nuance, look at the French side of you. Maybe we could just show why they're fighting. Or, no, 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 no. It's got to be, it's got to be a cartoony villain. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that does. I might possibly do a review of it. I will have to see the film. And I haven't been to the cinema since the first Hobbit film. Um, and that's not going to change because that one gave me shell shock, I think. <laughs> so, um, all other alternative is, um, you know, yaha fiddly d. <laughs> so... We'll see. I might do a quick review on that one. But if it is bad, that is a shame because I really want something that's authentic. You know, even if the plot isn't as good, if you have a drama that feels more authentic and set in the time period, I can enjoy it. And it looks like actually Philippa Gregory, of all people, agrees with me. So th now this isn't the original article. I originally saw it in the Times, but I think I have like a one article limit, so I can't get back into it. So I've had to use the Daily Fail <coughs> Mail. Sorry. I usually don't like using them for these sort of things. They're a bit clickbaity with the historical ones. Like, for example, there's one on the Titanic. Although, to be fair, they weren't the only ones who did this, but there was a documentary on Channel 4 claiming that the Titanic was sunk because of a fire in the coal bunker, and it's literally based off of two photographs. But if you look at it closely, you can see the smudge changes between photographs. And there's another photograph that doesn't have it, which kind of disproves the whole premise of the video. But, um, unfortunately, a lot of these newspapers do run with it. But for the purposes of this, we'll, we'll use this. So, Historical novelist Philippa Gregory blasts sex-obsessed TV producers who vow to respect her books, then write story they want using Wikipedia research. Hmm, I wonder who that reminds us of. Any certain producers from a certain series we know? <laughs> so, an acclaimed historical novelist has called for an end to mediocre screen adaptations. Philippa Gregory, who wrote The Other Berlin Girl, said producers who routinely promise to respect the authenticity of a book before writing the story they want. And that, that is, you know, I mean, I've not actually read Philippa Gregory's books, I'm afraid. I've only seen the adaptations of her dramas, and 
let's just say my opinions of them are not very good. <laughs> Most of the commenters I see are generally say even a lot of her books are quite inaccurate, but you know, I can at least still like a drama if it's authentic in some details. Because if you've been watching my Cheetah Rant videos, you know I generally have sort of three criteria when I approach them. It's sort of the characters and the story versus the history. So how does historical events play out and how do the historical characters play out? So if I'm watching a film about Henry VIII, I'd want to know if Henry, they show it correct. So Henry VIII has six wives, does things he did historically and so on. Second criteria would be, is it authentic? So does it look correct? Is Henry dressed the way he was? Is he look, look like the sort of physique he had at the time it's meant to be in the film and so on? And then the third one is, how does it work as a drama? Is the plot all right? Um, is it entertaining, you know? So you do get some dramas that, you know, they can might not even fulfil all criteria. Um, for example, The Henry VIII and the Six Wives, the 1972 one, in terms of the characters and the story versus the history and the authenticity, they're both really good. <laughs> it's one of the most accurate. As a drama, though, it's not as good because it's only two hours and it's trying to cover his entire reign. So you left a bit sort of... You can't really keep up. You have to have a knowledge of the history almost to keep up with the plot. Um, equally, on the reverse side, you could get something like, say, Elizabeth, the 1998 one. Character story and the authenticity is a bit hit and, hit and miss, basically. Uh, and some bits, some some is really good. Like um, Kate Blanche Sheaves actually was a quite good Elizabeth and really did look like her. But then other ones, it's like, you know, um, Attenborough, he's way too old to be burly. He was only like in his 50s, I think, at that point. Um, but then as a film, it's actually a fairly decent film. And to be fair, I do agree with Philippa here, like a lot of the adaptations of her dramas, they lack in all three, like, you know, The White Princess and all those ones. So Gregory said producers would fill you with champagne and say, we love your book, before rewriting the story after using Wikipedia for the general background. Mm -hmm. Speaking at the time of Cheltenham Literature Festival, she said, they do whatever they like, and if you say, this is terrible, they say, I know, but it's got to be like this. And funny thing, I think she does hit onto a point. They've, they've become very arrogant in their ways. I mean, I've been thinking a lot about a lot. Like, when did period drama start to go downhill? Like, when did they stop caring about things like authenticity and accuracy? And I'm not really sure because you do get some old ones that you know are inaccurate. I mean, if you go back, to, say, um, uh, well, I'm doing one for Cherry Rant Four, which is the uh, 2003 one of Henry VIII, and that's got some quite inaccurate scenes, but it's still like somewhat feels like Henry VIII, even with you know Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> accent i've probably got to say it's the tudor series that started because that just did not care about i say that but there were some bits that weren't too bad but broadly speaking it didn't care as much and i think it still did well so i think they just kind of there's the old adage if it ain't broke don't fix it so and i'm afraid it's only got worse you know they decided a lot of like arty farty sort of oh we're going to create a feeling or look at this element you know we're gonna... and then they just ignore like actual really interesting stories they could have used you know so say in the white princess the example they used with henry the seventh the breton crisis that's something that could have been really interesting and that no they just just cut it out and then uh, then she continues one production said to me this is all very well but we have to have some more nudity in it i said how much nudity they said to <laughs> <laughs> two breasts in the bottom. I like this. They're like sort of bargaining. Like, uh, yeah, I'll raise your two breasts in the bottom for three. You know. <laughs> oh dear. I'm a modern woman, so I said, sure, knock yourself out. They can have a bath. I don't mind. Hmm. Wonder which straw we know has a character who has a bath in it. Hmm. <laughs> Some people do a very nice job with it, and some people do a mediocre job with it, and some do a job that I don't watch. Yeah, that is another thing as well. They, they are just sort of sort of putting nudity in a lot of it when it's like it doesn't. Like if you're going to do it, it's got to fit in the story in some because it just brings it to a, you know, pardon the pun, a grinding halt. You just got oh a nude scene and it's like this is a scene you could be using to develop characters, do plot, something more interesting. And it's like no no no, we're going to be controversial. Oh nudity. <laughs> I just wonder like you know, why do they? <laughs> why are producers obsessed with that? So uh, what other ones have we got here? Oh yes, yeah, apparently she she also voiced her displeasure with the <laughs> the Harvey Weinstein backed adaptation of the other Berlin girl. Well, I think we've got our answers why they want more nudity. <laughs> I wonder yeah, if he's not behind the White Princess and the Spanish Princess. And as um, it's not in this, I remember it's from the Times article. There's one more thing as well. She mentions that apparently she's going to try and make an adaptation of a Catherine Parr book she's written. Um, she's looking for funding for that. So. Well, I mean, even if the plot's terrible, if, if she tries to make it authentic, you know, I'll watch it, <laughs> review it. 
And that's the thing, because authenticity, that can, can make or break a period of drama, because, you know, we're not idiots. We, we have seen these time periods showed on screen many times before, so we have a rough idea what they look like. So uh, I'll give one example. There's um, Allo Allo, which is a comedy series um, set in World War II in occupied France. It's basically a parody of secret... Well, they claimed it wasn't, but it, it is a parody of secret army and other sort of World War II dramas. You know, it's, if, if you're a Britain, it's, it's you probably know of it, but it <laughs> is hilarious. But the last couple of seasons weren't as good. And they, they were fine, you know, with the authenticity, like the uniforms and things. Oh, you say, oh yeah, that's that's clearly World War Two German uniform. But for some reason, in the last episode, Colonel von Strom is wearing a pickle halberd and an imperial uniform, and you're like, why is he doing that? I don't. They don't explain it. I've like, is it some sort of plan to? He has to try and escape, or <laughs> there was one episode like earlier in like season one or two when they wear it because it's the Kaiser's birthday, but that's explained in the episode. This isn't. So you left wondering, like, that's not authentic. Why is that? This is the sort of thing you notice and. And it's the same with a lot of these Tudor ones. Like, you know, we've seen pictures of Henry VIII, so we know what he dressed like. And then you see, like, say, Jonathan Rees Myers and the Tudors, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, and same with, like, you know, with the uh, White Princess, like, you know, they, I forgot they actually got to play him, and, um, you know, he's got a beard and everything. And it's even worse than the Spanish Princess, because then he's, he looks way too old, and he's got really short hair and a beard. And it's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, Philippa, if you, you know, if you want to try, I'll, I'll forgive you for some of the, the bad plot points in your books. But yeah, so that's this one. Uh, uh, thank you for, for listening. Obviously, it's a shame about the, the king, but uh, hey, uh, Pr- Princess Principal had a trailer out, you know. <laughs> I'm happy. Also, I am rapidly approaching a thousand subscribers. I don't know what if I'll do anything special for that, or maybe just a video. I'm not I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll see. So in the meantime, this has been The Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day.